it's amazing here. I see myself living here for a long time. Nice. Yeah, for a long time. For a long time, yeah. <laughs> Six months. I've been working in Prague for 22 months, so almost two years. Uh, I've been here for one year and half a month, let's say. Uh, currently not looking for a job. Pretty happy at the place I'm working at. I would say um, one and a half years, yeah. But well, with different companies, so, yeah. How difficult was it to find a job? Well, for me it wasn't so difficult because I was, I, I was studying here. So I, I came here around 20, 2016 and I got a job like one or two months after I got here. Not difficult at all. First I came, I sent my CV to a couple of companies and the second one took me. It's like maybe took most, most long one month after I sent CV. Well, uh, I wasn't planning on moving to Prague. I found a job before I came here, so that was one of the reasons for moving to Prague. It was extremely easy to find a job. Um, I am an English teacher, and there is a high demand for English teachers all the time in Prague. So, yeah, as soon as I wanted a job, it was very easy for me to get it. Currently, across Europe, the Czech Republic has the lowest unemployment rate at just 2.8%. Um, I don't see that trend changing particularly in the next year or so. Um, however, there's many economists say that a, a potential economic crisis will happen in the next two years, which may have an impact on things. Um, but as it currently stands, for the long term or the foreseeable future, there's a lot of opportunities available for job seekers, but there's not as many job seekers as there are opportunities. There are many organisations particularly those hiring engineers or software developers who have no other choice than to hire candidates from abroad. Um, some of the difficulties though with other companies in this sector are that they're not necessarily willing to sponsor visas and work permits, which means they're limited to candidates from within the European Union. And there's actually a, a shortage of skilled workers in this regard across the whole of the European Union. So it's, it's difficult to find people even from abroad if people are if companies aren't willing to sponsor work permits it's above that i would say my income is around that amount maybe a little bit higher but not much it's below for sure <laughs> After all tax. Uh, I'll say uh, the first, my first employer paid me above, and my second employer paid me below. Not, not. I'll say around, around, playing around that, that area. I mean that figure. So it's, it's pretty much okay. To achieve the average salary of the Czech Republic at around 31,000 Czech crowns per month, there's many administrative roles, um, entry level administrative roles requiring just Czech and English that are available to people. It, when people look at multilingual roles or more skilled roles, however, the salaries are higher. Um, unfortunately, in the local market conditions in Prague, the average salary doesn't really give you a sustainable income for a comfortable lifestyle. So if you're a young single male or female coming from abroad looking to work in the Czech Republic, the likeliness is you'll be able to command a salary, let's say from 30,000 to 45, 50,000, but the rental price of property nowadays has really gone through the roof in the last few years and this means that it's most likely if you're open to sharing then flat share is your best option if you're not open to sharing then it's unlikely you're going to be able to afford accommodation in the center of prague and you probably have to think about traveling into prague and the type of lifestyle you can lead based on times to and from work cost to and from work and the general cost of living Before I was, I was living in a dormitory because I was a student, so I, I would say um, less than 20% or 30%. But now, I mean, I, I completed university, uh, my master's, so I'm paying quite a lot, like around 55% of my salary yeah, goes into my rent and my bills altogether. Yeah. Okay, if I paid my rent myself only, it would take half approximately. 
about half, and that is mobile phone, um, electricity, internet, so all of my bills, about 50%, I think. Yeah, so the rent is the biggest problem, I would say, at the moment. Um, most of the salary goes for the rent. The expenses are not too big for the everyday, uh, like food or restaurants or bars or uh, just entertainment. Yeah, if we say that the average salary is uh, 1,200 euros, uh, it, it, of course, depends on your preferences. Uh, if we should say in general, then studio apartments uh, start at about, in Prague, at about 12,000 crowns and they go to 15,000 crowns uh, depending on the location of course and on the on the quality of the apartment and the, the furnishing and all this uh, but you basically cannot really get a studio for less money than 12,000 crowns in Prague uh, so if we say that the uh, 1,200 euros is around 30 something thousand crowns then it's almost half of your your salary so, but studio is okay. Then if you want to get something bigger, uh, like one, uh, one bedroom apartment, it would be between 17, 20,000 crowns a month. Again, depending on the location. So if, you, if you're a couple and both of you have the, the salary, then it's, you, you, can, you can afford pretty decent and nice apartment. If you're alone, uh, then studio is probably the, the maximum you could you can reasonably live in with, with the salary. There are many options for families. Families usually uh, prefer to live uh, not closer to center, usually in the suburbs. Uh, now also a trend is that they move out of Prague and they live in the, uh, in the town or a city next to Prague. So Prague becomes a metropole. And it's easier to, you know, to uh, commute to Prague like 30 minutes by car. It's cheaper. They have a nice house. They can even have a swimming pool sometimes. It's a huge trend now to uh, then to have an apartment in the center of Prague. People, even if not the families, if they're singles, they tend to live together. They tend to flat share a lot because flats are so expensive. So they rather would pay uh, rent for a room, which can be even 10 or 11,000, even 13,000 per month. Uh, and live closer to center than live in a very small, ugly studio somewhere, somewhere uh, in the middle of nowhere. So people tend to live together even if they're adults and working. But average person, let's say a young person under 30 or around 30 years old, um, they tend to have a, a you know a full-time job and then they tend to have some part-time jobs too. And uh, about the expenses, I would say half of that goes to apartment. The at least half goes to apartment depends what your requirements are. Um, then maybe 10% go to utilities or 20% and the rest just on your, you know, on your life. And people usually don't save much because there's nothing much to save. Also depends on nationality. Some, we, we've had clients from all around the world and some of them just say, hey, I don't want to spend more than a third of my, uh, of my salary on housing because I want to have money for, uh, for the rest of the things. And we work with that. So they, they don't negotiate about the rent. So it, even if it means that they have to live in a room, uh, in the shared apartment, they cannot afford their own apartment. They are fine with that because for there the priority is to just spend this much on, on, on apartment or housing. Actually in Prague, the city center I would not say is the, the most wanted location. Prague too is probably the, the place where most of the expats want to live. So they want to live there and they care more about the, the housing and then the apartment where they live and the location than about like how much they will be paying. So then, in that case, they spent even more than half of the of the salary for uh, for that rent. And also, there are so many opportunities to spend your money in Prague, like restaurants, plenty of cafes, and everything. So then, the rest the rest of the money can easily go to to restaurants and uh, eating out. I, I wouldn't compare Prague to many other cities. Um, general cost of living in terms of groceries and everyday amenities is is less. Um, but salaries generally are lower. Um, I think people do see places like Berlin, Barcelona and still before Brexit, London as more glamorous locations with better salaries and a better quality of life. Um, it, it really comes down to the individual and, and what they're looking for. But Prague, Brno, Czech Republic in general does have something for everyone. Um, that's the way I like to view it. 
Um, generally, I'd say sort of salary-wise um, and, and even things like accommodation-wise and cost of luxury items and goods, you can probably put a 20% premium for being in Prague above Brno. Um, if you look at other areas of the Czech Republic, for example, the part of Ipsa region, you can go as far as 30-35% in terms of a premium for living in Prague. Um, it really does depend on whether it's an industrial town, a large town, a small town, and which part of the country it's in and what the transport links are from those particular areas. Um, but Prague is, is by far the most expensive place to live and work in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, mostly food, entertainment, like cinema, clothes, <laughs> the basic stuff, I would say. I would say so, depending on your lifestyle. Uh, of course, uh, you need to plan your savings. It's not like that uh, you go out and spend all your money and you expect that you will have something saved up. So you still need to plan. Activities, um, short day trips to other places, um, getting out into the country, doing fun things with my friends. Um, I eat out at restaurants more in Prague than I do at home in Canada because it's very social here and it's quite economical. Um, so I'm sure some money goes for that. So if I have a goal, yes, I can save up gradually for a trip or something I know will be expensive. I expect in the next few months I will be able to save a bit each month. <laughs> okay, <laughs> going out, travel, um, see mail stuff, shopping, so on, <laughs> how to do without, something like that, some maybe savings. If you are two persons, for sure you can. If you are one, difficult, <laughs> difficult, yeah. Well, you know, I'm from Africa, so I mean, I used to I often, often send money home. So I, I spend much of majority of my, 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 my salary um, for family support or because I don't, I'm not, I don't like the party that much. So and I don't buy a lot of clothes. So basically, I spend my money for, like I would say like family support, like supporting orphanage homes back in Africa. So, yeah, well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm able to save something for myself. I mean, to do some little traveling around and having fun, I mean, once in a while, but I'm able to save, but not too much. Well, we have a lot of clients that come to us and they have no savings at all. And when you come to a new country to live and a new city to live, it's a huge investment in the beginning. You have to pay for your deposit for your flat, you have to pay the rent, you have to pay for documents, for translations, whatever. Uh, so it's a huge investment in the beginning, but then it gets better and better. But a lot of people come in and say they don't even have money for a deposit. So what I advise is just to really, you know, save some money before coming here. So at least for like the next half a year, because it's well, they have to spend a lot in the beginning. Of course, depends on the nationality, because for EU citizens, it's easier to move here and there are no limitations uh, than if you're coming from outside of the EU. But also you should be very clear about what you want to do here and then focus on that. Because if you just come here, okay, I will try to find a job and if it works out, works out, if not, then you will just spend plenty of money for nothing, for staying in Airbnb and extending the stay and it might not work out. So if you decide to move here, you should have a perfect idea of what you want to do. If you want to do business, find a job, focus on that. Because also, for example, people from outside of the EU, they come here, they know that they need to get a visa but they prefer other things. They do the course and they go out and they, they explore Prague, they travel. And the visa is kind of like the last thing they focus on. And then everything can get pretty complicated because of that. So spend the first three months, four months, like focusing on the main thing, and then you can enjoy the life. But don't, don't try to uh, do too many things in the beginning. People are very kind and they tend to advise on things they don't even know about. So if you have a legal question or a legal a visa question or anything, it's better to ask someone who is competent in this question rather than asking the Facebook because you would get you would get in trouble. I think first anyone looking to relocate to the Czech Republic for work is really assess whether you are actually ready to relocate and really take some time to investigate the comparative costs of living, the potential salary that you can achieve, how much taxes you're going to pay, and what it's going to mean to you in terms of making that transition to the Czech Republic. 
there's plenty of opportunities to find out about what it's like to live and work. There's plenty of websites and links to groups available for you on the internet. Um, so just really take your time to really decide if, if relocation is right for you. And I'd make that advice whether it was the Czech Republic or any other country really. <laughs> Okay, um, I've been living in the Czech Republic for 10 years, so you, you could say I've become accustomed to things. Um, however, I lived my first five years in Prague, and when I came to Prague, uh, it was very difficult, no job, didn't speak any Czech, um, really had to start from the very beginning. Um, I wouldn't advise anyone to do it that way, again. Um, but people are accommodating, the younger generation speaks very good English uh, and it's actually very easy to live your life in Prague. Um, for the last five years I've lived in a very small village um, out in the Pardubica region, about 100 kilometres east of Prague, 130 kilometres northwest of Brno, um, and there's really not a lot there and there's not a lot of English spoken, but immersing yourself in the culture, the village life and, and the people around you is actually great fun. It's the same kind of lifestyle, money, job in your home country? In my home country would be a little bit worse. There is a lower level of life. The salary could be maybe even the same, but things that I can afford there, less. But before Czech Republic, I was living in Greece and with approximately similar salary, I got better level of life, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> I'm a strange person. Czech Republic is a nice country, calm, good, safe, but I'm not planning, to be honest. I want to move on. <laughs> it's a different environment. Uh, I like here. Uh, the city, as I said, was really, very, it's very welcoming for foreigners, especially, no matter from which country you're coming from. Uh, and that's a big advantage. You never feel like uh, you're not at home, so the city is beautiful. It's pretty similar with the balance of how much money I make and my lifestyle. It's a totally different lifestyle, of course, doing different things, but I think, yeah, I'm, I'm the same level of comfort with my life here as I would be in Canada. And for my home country, you will be able to um, you will extremely be able to have fun, like crazy. You will have fun with that kind of money. You can't compare the living, um, the living um, conditions in Africa as compared to Europe. Yeah, well, I, I fell in love with Bruno because I love to travel. So I think Bruno, to me, Bruno is the best place. Um, if anybody wants to come to the Czech Republic, I'm going to recommend Bruno. It's amazing here. I see myself living here for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. For a long time, yeah.